So what is the perspective of the American public on all of this? There's some new polling um, that shows basically Americans are super on board with everything except for actual boots on the ground, um, including measures that are uh, terrible ideas and would probably result in boots on the ground and World War III and potential nuclear conflict. Let's go ahead and put this tweet up on the screen that kind of just a good summation of this latest economist, I think it was economist YouGov, but definitely mm -hmm. YouGov poll. Net support in the USA for sanctions, plus 51. Sending money, plus 43. Sending weapons, plus 38. Sending troops to NATO, plus 31. Here's where things get really scary. No fly zone support, plus 25. Yeah. Also scary, Ukraine in NATO, plus 20. Mm. Then you get to the place, okay, cyber attack on Russia, there's basically like equal <laughs> split in favor and against. This is also a terrible idea, guys. Sending soldiers to help, but not to fight. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that has minus five, only minus five, also a little scary. Drone attacks on Russia, minus 19. Airstrike on Russia, minus 33, and sending soldiers to actually fight, minus 35. Um, so again, the fact that you have such bipartisan, strong support for a no-fly zone, which I hope we have adequately explained to, he to you here multiple times, you're talking about World War III, is deeply, deeply disturbing. And why do you have such broad support among the public for something that is so dramatically escalatory and extremely dangerous for the world? Well, in part, it's because the media has done a terrible job of helping people to understand yes. what this actually means. And not only that, they're pushing, we played you the clips of them pushing Kamala Harris and other officials like, why won't you do more? Why won't you do a no-fly zone? Here's the later latest iteration of that, Chuck Todd, pushing Secretary of State Tony Blinken. Why are you ruling out a no-fly zone? Let's take a listen. The president's been very clear about one thing all along as well, which is we're not going to put uh, the United States in direct conflict uh, with Russia, uh, not have uh, you know American planes flying against Russian planes uh, or our soldiers on the ground in Ukraine, because for everything we're doing for Ukraine, the president also has a responsibility to not uh, get us into a direct conflict, a direct war, with Russia, a nuclear power, and risk a war that expands even beyond Ukraine uh, to Europe. Uh, that's clearly not, not our interest. What we're trying to do is end this war in, uh, in Ukraine, not start a larger one. So, you know, good answer there. From, Great answer. From Tony Blinken. And thankfully, this is one of the few times where I'm glad that the politicians are actually mm -hmm. bucking public sentiment, again, because I think a lot of the political rhetoric, too, around He's Hitler. This is, you know, we can't have appeasement. We can't be Neville, Neville Chamberlain. All of this rhetoric, Trump saying it's a Holocaust. Well, it leads people to want to take relatively extreme yes. actions. I mean, that is the logical next next step conclusion. So it's hard for you to say, as Nancy Pelosi did, that basically, like, this is Germany and Hitler and Nazis, and then say, oh, absolutely not to a no-fly zone. People rightly look at that and are like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Let's go ahead and put the New York Times up on the screen. Right now, most U.S. lawmakers are saying no to the no-fly zone. Guess who one of the few exceptions to that is? Our friend, Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, who just loves to be terrible and wrong on yeah. every issue, What's I guess. What's he doing here, Crystal? He says, I would take nothing off the table. For us to hesitate or for anyone to hesitate in the free world is wrong. Uh, and just so you know, again, what the stakes are, what Putin said in that same news conference that we've been quoting, because he said a lot of noteworthy things about a no-fly zone, is that it is, he says, we hear calls to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine. It is impossible to do from Ukrainian territory. It can only be done from the territory of other states. But any moves in such direction will be seen by us as participation in an armed conflict by the country that will create threats to our servicemen. So he's directly saying, no fly zone means you are part of this war. Yeah, I think, look, here's what I would implore you. Please send anybody who supports this, what we've talked about here over and over again. And I will use the words of Philip Breedlove, the NATO com former NATO commander who supports a no-fly zone, who still at least explained what it is. 
it doesn't just mean shooting planes out of the sky. It also means that if Russia retaliates against our jets, that we would then have to take offensive action against their air defense systems inside of Russia. And then, after we do that, that the Russians would have to take action against our jets, which are outside of Ukraine, in NATO territory, which means that you have now created a situation where just in a span of a few days, they have a full-blown hot war between the NATO alliance and Russia in which the consequences and the chances of going nuclear are at, what, 50%? I would say higher, personally, uh, based upon what I've read about Russian military doctrine. Another thing I do want to say which is very important for everybody at home. In terms of the idiocy, uh, which didn't make it in the show, but we saw Lindsey Graham out there, oh, you know, calling for the oh. assassination of Putin, oh, saying, God. oh, we need to see, you know, who is the Brutus uh, in Russia? First of all, read the second half of Julius Caesar there, okay? Find out exactly what happens. <laughs> but in terms of what that means, Russian military doctrine, military doctrine in terms of use for its nuclear weapons, specifically includes an attempt at regime change inside of Russia. This is written in very specifically as a threat to the West. Do not screw with us. If you are calling for the destruction of our regime, that is grounds for the launch of a first strike by the Russian government. So it may seem cavalier by these people. Oh, you know, we need, somebody needs to take this guy out. Talk of a no-fly zone beating the chest. I posted about it. Some people were like, well, is he wrong? Well, yeah, actually, he is wrong. Because here's why. If we are seen to be engaging at this at any level in the U.S. government, it feeds paranoia in the Russian government, increases the likelihood of a nuclear confrontation, and worse, what it really does show you is that we are slow walking ourselves in a public that does not understand these consequences. We have to use real rhetoric. No-fly zone means war with Russia. It's inevitable. It is a fait accompli. And if you message it that way, people will understand. So... All of you who watch the show, listen to the show, do the Lord's work and spread the gospel. Yeah, because we have to we have got to get people understanding yes. the consequences yes, of what we're talking about. That's exactly right. right. It is so, so important. Yeah. Um, because how long are these politicians gonna hold the line against their own hawkish yeah, instincts yeah. here? Um and Senator Graham also, it's not like he's some backbench senator. No, I know. I mean, yeah. this is someone who has traveled broadly, is widely known among world leaders. So for him to be saying something that is so irresponsible and so insane is in and of itself just a, a horrific turn of events. Um, even he later sort of like, you know, walked it back a little bit. And, you know, but it was it was bad. And people right. on his own side of the aisle were saying, this is terrible. Fox News was saying, this is terrible. This is irresponsible. Don't go forward with this kind of crap. <sighs> so um, that's where the American people are today. It is another reason why I'm sort of uncomfortable with the like rising levels of Zelensky thirst because, and this is not to take anything away from I him. I think he's a hero, but, but he's doing what's good for him. We when need you, what's good right, for us. And you have to understand, yeah. like yeah. there's a propaganda campaign yes. around this guy too. And anytime right. you have this sort of political hero narrative, then it gives that person more standing when they do what he's doing, which right. is calling for a no-fly zone and calling for banning Russian oil and calling for you know more fighter jets and these sorts of things. So you're like, well, if the hero Zelensky is saying it, then it must be the right thing right. to do. And it makes it harder to resist those calls once you've built a person. I already like know, that. Crystal, the fact that you even acknowledge that you know there are some limited number of neo-Nazis in Ukraine, people are gonna say, oh, you're parroting Russian propaganda. We're trying to tell you the truth. We're it's just trying to be honest. dynamic situation. And in dynamic situations, it's important that you at home understand the consequences of everything. Because if you are just getting spoon fed, you know, you look just as foolish as some guy who's telling you that the Ukrainian government run by a Jew is full of Nazis. You have to acknowledge both the good and the bad so that we can make a clear decision whenever the consequences are a nuclear exchange. People think I'm fear mongering too, whenever I talk about this. I mean, look, you're welcome to believe that. But if you've read enough about Russian military doctrine and also about about how the many times in our history that we've come close to pushing the red button, you would be, I think, just as afraid as I am. History teaches us that we should be 10 times more cautious and less cavalier about nukes yeah. than we are, especially in a confrontation with these great power conflicts. So look, you know, it may, it may sound good. Oh, uh, just no fly zone. Yeah, just make sure so nobody can fly. What does that mean? It means war. And as if you understand that, the people who are the most in the know all do understand that. 
God bless the fact that Joe Biden seems to understand that mm -hmm. for now. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's keep it that way. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.